Number four. Since astronauts in orbit are apparently weightless, a clever method of measuring their masses is needed to monitor their mass gains or losses to adjust diets. One way to do this is to exert a known force on an astronaut and measure the acceleration produced. Suppose a net external force of 50 newtons is exerted and the astronaut's acceleration is measured to be 0.893 meters per second squared. Calculate her mass. Okay, so for letter A, we know uh, simply that the force, right, uh, the net external force on this astronaut, so let's call it um, a force in the x direction, right, that is equal to 50 newtons. Okay, we also know that her acceleration that she experienced, she must also experience that acceleration in the x direction. It should be 0 0.893 meters per second squared. And we're trying to calculate now the mass, all right? So in order to do so, let's see if we find an equation that relates those three variables. And we have one right, right here on the right-hand side. So we know that the sum of the forces in the x direction should equal the mass of the object multiplied by the acceleration in that same dimension. So we have the force being 50 newtons, the mass being in the unknown, and the acceleration being 0 0.893. Sound like hell's angels outside. So we have an acceleration of uh, 0.893. Um, so to find the mass, just divide out the 0 0.893 from both sides, 0 0.893. That cancels, and now the mass is, oh, there they go, hell's angels. 50 divided by 0.893. As long as they're not coming here, I'm fine with that. So we get a value of 56.0, and that's in kilograms. Oh, not kilometers, kilograms. All right, so that's the mass. Easy peasy. Now for part B, um, let's see. It says, by exerting a force on the astronaut, the vehicle in which they orbit experiences an equal but opposite force. So to discuss how this would affect the measurement of the astronauts. Okay, so basically, uh, just pretend you're in, a, you're in a space vehicle. That's an interesting space vehicle. Uh, I guess it'll have wings. Uh, sure. Okay, so if the astronaut's in here, right, and they're both moving at the same velocity, both in some direction, okay, let's say now the astronaut is strapped, right, into the uh, vehicle, and let's say now the, uh, the, uh, what the heck is this thing called? <laughs> Oops, little, little brain freeze. The, um, oh my goodness, what the heck is the thing called? Spaceship. Man, so the spaceship, let's say now, will experience an acceleration, okay? Um, and it's going to propel it forward uh, by some amount, by some known amount. So that's fine. And now if the astronaut is strapped in, she will also experience that same acceleration forward, right? But as far as now recoil, we're trying to figure out now if there's another particular way, instead of maybe doing it this way, is there another way to do it? Well, imagine she's still on that spaceship, okay? And... Um, and here now, she's on the spaceship, and she has, let's say, a heavy object, right? So if she now, in terms of the spaceship, if this mass of this object is known, all right, and let's say she's holding it, what she can do is she can push, right, the mass, the, the object with a known mass in a certain direction, okay? And then by her pushing this object, let's say, to the right, Right, this object imparts an equal but opposite force on her. So it pushes her to the left. All right. And therefore, now by measuring the distances, we can now find, um, you know, by, me by measuring the change in distance over the change in time, right, or, and the velocity, uh, we can then figure out the acceleration that this rock, all right, experienced. And if we know the acceleration and we know the mass of the rock, then we're able to find the force. And whatever force she imparted on the rock would have been the same as the force she imparted basically on herself. All right? So that would be a way around it. Anyway, guys, thanks for checking out the video. Hopefully this helped. Please remember to subscribe. And I thank you very much.